I'm Bianca. And I'm Grant. And, and this, this is, is the Lake House Project. Alright, today we are going to start finally grouting the floor. First step is wiping down the whole surface. Let's get to it. So you're going to have some leftover mortar from laying the tile and that's what you're really cleaning up here. And if you want to see how we laid all this tile, you can check out last week's episode. After that, we used a utility knife to go through all of the grout lines and make sure that there wasn't any mortar sticking up above the surface that would protrude above the grout joint. Then it's time for grout and I'll show how to mix this up a little bit later in the episode. You're going to want to use a grout float, which is that tool there on the ground, to push the grout into each grout joint, making sure you completely fill it. You want to be a little bit liberal with your application here rather than too conservative. And there's definitely a bit of a learning curve here, but I'll go through and tell you guys all the pro tips as we get through the episode. After you put all the grout down, you can come back with a sponge and clean it up to the best of your ability. And you're going to want to rinse your sponge very often as it's going to get dirty very quickly. Then after about a day, you can come back with a cheesecloth to clean off the haze on the tile. And this is a little bit tricky and we'll get into some other alternatives you can use besides cheesecloth to properly clean the tile. But here's what it looked like after a pretty thorough cleaning. And you can see we did that section to the left there but we still have a lot to do to the right so we have to move all that stuff out of the way so we can get to it. And so now this is round two of mixing up our mortar. And here we're using a paddle mixer, which I'll link in the description. This definitely helps a lot and gets you a nice consistent mix. And as you can see, it's about a peanut butter consistency. Then it's back to using the grout float. And there isn't really too much of a trick here. However, you kind of want to keep the mortar off as much of the tile as you can and just focus directly on grout joints so it's less clean up in the end, although it does get a bit messy. Then after about 15 minutes, uh, after the grout has kind of set up just a little bit, you can see Bianca and my mom coming back behind me with sponges to clean off the excess grout and kind of shape that grout joint. And you want it to be a slight uh, dimple in the surface just beneath the surface level of the tile. And here's a bit of an up close shot of me pushing in uh, the grout into those grout joints. Again, you want to push it down into it. You don't want a thin layer. You want to get it all the way down in there and have it fully packed. And then you want to uh, drag the grout flow across the surface to try and pick up as much of that excess grout as possible. But you're not going to get it all. And that's where those sponges come into play. And so as I mentioned, we're going to use that cheesecloth again after about a day for the grout to fully set up. And it's a bit hard to tell, but there's a haze across the entire tile. Uh, no matter what grout color you choose, it's going to appear there and you got to figure out a way to get it off. And sometimes it can be a bit challenging. And here you can clearly see the difference between the cleaned and unclean tile. So this time we used a few new techniques, this is kind of round two, and my mom here decided to wet the cheesecloth down prior to wiping the tile, and the idea behind this was that it would kind of collect more of that dust, more of that haze that's coming off the tile, and this definitely did work, it was a lot better than using the dry cheesecloth as my dad does here with a foot technique. We kind of tried a variety of things to see what worked best, but you'll see in the third and final round of our haze removal what worked best for us. But as you can see here, we tried a variety of techniques, as I said, I tried using a mop at one point to see if that worked, but really all you're doing is just pushing around dirty water so the key here is to constantly be changing out your bucket and making sure you have clean water and not using your sponge for too long and here we're now moving into the third and final section of the floor again we have to move all of our furniture and whatnot and we had a few tile spacers still to remove as we had just finished the tile in this room and then again we went back through with our utility knives and scraped all the grout joints as you can see here we just had a little bit of mortar sticking through but we got rid of that and make sure that the grout looks nice and clean and you don't see any of that white mortar sticking through in the final result then we swept the floor vacuumed the floor and then sponged the floor to make sure we got all of that debris off the tile before grouting our last and final section another pro tip is to add stain blocker to your grout mix as you mix it and this way it's pre-mixed and you don't need to do it as a step later down the line and now we're on to mixing our third and final round of grout and we had learned all of our lessons up until this point, so now we know all the tricks. And depending on how large of a section that you're grouting at one time, you're gonna wanna have some water on hand just so you can add and mix it in to the grout bucket because it will dry out pretty quickly, especially if it's a little bit warmer or humid in your room. And you can really see how fast it dries just in this little time lapse here, going from a dark to a light gray. 
And as we did before, we came back with sponges to clean up all of those grout joints, and you really are shaping the grout joints. So this is a really crucial step, and you gotta have a good eye for it. And when you do sponge, you kinda wanna become Mr. Miyagi and do a little bit of wipe on, wipe off action, as you don't really wanna rub around the grout too much. Once you wipe it up, you wanna directly rinse it into that bucket of water, because you really are just spreading around more grout all over the tile, causing more of a headache and more cleanup later down the line. And as I grout in the background, I just wanted to take a moment and say that if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like, and if you're not already subscribed, to please do so. Right now, we're at about 679 subscribers as I record this video, and my goal is to hit 1,000. I was hoping to hit it a little bit sooner, but you know, it takes time to, to grow a channel and to grow an audience, but I hope all of you that are watching this are, are really enjoying the content, uh, and you guys are definitely fueling me to just keep pumping out these videos, and I know the end is in sight. I know there's light at the end of the tunnel. I know that 1,000 subscriber goal is not too far away, so really excited to keep progress on this lake house and keep showing you guys some tips and tricks along the way and sharing all the documentation. Now back to the video. Here you can see how my dad is using different clean parts of the sponge to continue uh, cleaning up the grout and I really wanted to show you guys this clip as you can see that grout joint on the upper part of the screen is quite big and there's too much grout there and you can see how the sponge with a few rubs, uh, very careful rubs, you can see how the grout joints cleaned up and now it looks really nice and crisp. This is how you want all of your grout joints to look by applying just enough pressure with the sponge to clean the area but not you know gouge too much into the grout and pull too much out from the joint. And I just wanted to mention that we also have an Instagram and TikTok if you want to stay even more up to date on the progress of this lake house. And now in the third and final round of cleaning off the haze, my mom finally found the solution. We used this brand of white rags uh, to clean up the haze and it worked surprisingly well. We had a sanded grout due to our eighth inch grout joints, which is usually a bit harder to clean off, but we wetted the surface and then went back with a white rag and it cleaned it off perfectly all in one pass. If you only take one thing away from this video, this is definitely the thing to remember as it will save you a ton of time cleaning up. All right, so the final step in the grouting process is to do all these joints around the staircase as well as the fireplace behind the camera. And you can't use regular grout for that. And that's why we have a silicone grout that matches the same grout color. And this is so that this can actually expand and contract when the wood expands and contracts during the winters and the summers and doesn't crack the tile or affect the wood in any way. The best way to do this since it's silicone caulk is to tape out both sides of the surfaces and then you can just use your finger to spread it out and then pull the tape off and you have a nice clean line. So let's get to it. I first had to remove the tape that I placed in order to prevent grout from going into this joint. Once the area was clean, I could come back and outline all the joints with some tape. Here I'm using frog tape and this is a very high quality tape, but I definitely recommend this as it will prevent the silicone from bleeding into other areas you don't want it to. Once the tape is complete, you can come back and start caulking. And you don't need to be too careful with this as we did a lot of prep work with that tape, so there can't really be much to go wrong. So you can just spread it with your finger. Again, it can be a little bit messy. And similar to the grout, you wanna make sure that it fully fills the joint. So use your finger to push it down and make sure you get all of the silicone into the joint. And so as you can see, the tape leaves a nice, really clean, professional line. And you want to make sure that you pull that tape off pretty quickly after you lay the silicone. You do not want it to set up. You want it to still be a little bit wet when you pull the tape off. All right, so now that we did the stairs, it's onto the fireplace. These green lines of tape uh, were to prevent the mortar from getting into this joint up against the fireplace. So we're going to pull those off use a utility knife to clear it out and make sure there's no excess mortar in there. Then we'll tape it out as we did for the stairs and then seal it with some silicone grout caulk. Let's get to it. Here you can see we got a little bit of grout on the fireplace, but it quickly cleans up with just a wet rag. 
And I just wanted to show you that before, even with some precise cuts on our tile, we still had some gaps around the fireplace, which you do want. You want to fill this with silicone, um, but it's a little bit jagged in places, but you'll see in the end that when the silicone goes in and it matches the same color as our grout, it just kind of blends in and you don't even really notice. And as I pull off this tape, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. I hope you guys learned something along the way. I'm really happy with the way the grout turned out, even with some hiccups along the way. It's always a learning process, right? And coming up on the Lake House project, we're gonna switch to the outside, no longer inside stuff for a little bit. We're gonna see how the landscaping turned out, but that video will probably come out in the new year. Uh, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break after posting videos for 54 weeks straight. Um, but I hope you guys have happy holidays. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next time.